Hello everybody, it's Tips here again and today we're going to be preparing to get more advanced with our Raspberry Pi using these two programs, PuTTY and WinSCP. Now you may have heard of the term SSH into your Raspberry Pi and PuTTY is the program that people use on Windows to do this. What it does is allow us to execute commands on our Raspberry Pi from our own computer just like we would if we were directly connected to it with our USB keyboard. WinSCP is another handy program which will allow us to visually navigate the directory tree of the Raspberry Pi and either move files to or from the Pi. It's really handy for transferring your games as well. Before we start, I'll give you a quick overview on what we will cover, so feel free to jump to the section you're most interested in. The links to all the software we will use are also in the description if you want to download them in advance. To start, we want to connect our Pi to our home network. The easiest way to do this is with a network cable and your router or switch. Simply plug one end of the cable into your router, the other end goes straight into your Pi. Make sure power is connected and you're ready to go. Downloading PuTTY is extremely easy. Find the link to PuTTY in the description, click that and you'll navigate to this web page. Once here we simply go to download and that will bring us here and we just want to download putty.exe. It's as simple as that, it's the first link you see. I'm saving mine to my desktop but save it wherever you feel most comfortable and it's as simple as that. Once it's downloaded, no installation is required, it's ready to run. WinSCP is just as simple. Follow the link again in the description and you'll be transferred to this page. I prefer to download the portable executable, so click that link and then you'll be greeted with a download window and click save. Now this downloads as a zip file, so open up the zip and all we need is the application file. That's the one that runs on Windows if you're not sure. It's the biggest file in the package, but if you do extract both, you will notice that one has a nice icon and one doesn't. We want the one with the nice icon. Now we need to determine the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. This is very quick and simple to do, so connect your USB keyboard, press F4 to access the console, and type sudo space ifconfig. If done correctly, you will see something similar to this. Because I am on Ethernet, I have ETH0 here and Ethernet here. If you're connecting via Wi-Fi, it will be similar, but with Wi-Fi instead. Our IP address is this number here, so write that down and you're done with your Pi for now. Now we have everything we need to connect to our Pi via SSH. To do this, we want to open PuTTY, which we downloaded earlier. We'll be greeted with this screen. For our host name, we want to put our IP address that we obtained from the Pi. So type this in, just like so. We're going to leave port as 22, and we're going to select SSH. Now what you can do here is type Pi, and click Save. And now we'll save these defaults so we don't have to type them in every time we load PuTTY. Once you're done with that, it's as simple as clicking Open. You'll be presented with a login as, and that's when we type our username of Pi. And our password is Raspberry. It won't show you the password as you type it, but it's definitely going in, so just type away and push enter. From here, you'll see the usual screen we see when connected directly to the Pi using our USB keyboard, and we can type all our commands just as if we we're physically connected to the device. The only thing we can't do is see GUI applications like Emulation Station, but we can browse and enter commands into the terminal, which will make our life much easier when troubleshooting the Pi. We will be using PuTTY in our future videos, so make sure you can get to this point and input some commands if you like to get familiar with this interface. Now let's take a look at WinSCP. This tool is great for visually navigating your Pi's folder structure and also transferring files to and from the Pi. Connecting is just as simple as PuTTY. Copy your IP address to the hostname field and type your username and password just as before. We can leave our port as 22 and the protocol as SFTP. Hit the save button so we don't have to retype this again, choosing to save password if you wish. Click login and we'll be greeted with the Pi's folder structure, allowing us to navigate it just as we do in Windows. Navigate through the folders just as I'm doing on screen and to copy ROMs, simply drag and drop them into the appropriate folder. WinSCP is as simple as that, so make sure you do have it set up and ready to use because it's a great tool to have with your Pi. Thanks for watching. My next video will be showing us how to install Kodi and set it up like we saw earlier in this video with its own menu, so please stay tuned for that one.